is good everybody welcome to an epic my name toys video today ladies and gentlemen we have my wrestlemania 36 full match card predictions for you guys obviously wrestlemania coming this weekend even though it does not feel like wrestlemania one bit right i mean saturday night we got one night of, of wrestlemania matches and then on sunday night we have our second night they're going to do a two night event don't know don't really know why they did this i feel like maybe they should have cut the card down to maybe eight matches and give us their best eight on sunday night but you know what, Brad? I don't make the rules. I just break them. So it really doesn't feel like WrestleMania to me. I feel like this could have been done way before now as far as the two-night event goes. There will not be anyone in attendance, as we all know. We've been hearing it for weeks upon weeks. And there are a lot of matches on this card that I really am not looking forward to, especially without a crowd, guys. It's going to be very odd. It's going to be very weird. I know we've gotten, you know, some wrestling from WWE on live television and stuff like that. But in the magnitude of WrestleMania, you know, WrestleMania, what makes WrestleMania WrestleMania? is the crowd and the atmosphere and the the arena and and you know the entrances and all of that stuff so I don't know how WWE is going to make this feel like WrestleMania. You know, hopefully they give it their best foot forward. I don't really think they will, but uh, we're just going to go into it. I know the show is pre-taped. We got some things happening with this show where they've changed course and stuff like that. So let's just get into it, guys. I'm going to give you my full match card predictions, breaking down the feuds going in, what I think about the matches, who I think is going to win the matches, where I think the feud could go going forward, and everything in between. So with that being said, guys, let's dive into this 16-match card and break down all of my predictions for WrestleMania 36. So I guess we can start off with the match that I'm not looking forward to at all. We have Elias taking on Trash Corbin, and this matchup is not a WrestleMania match whatsoever, guys. I really don't know why we're getting this. I feel like they could have trashed this match, you know, way long ago. I'm gonna go with Corbin to get the win just because it's Elias. You know, I, I feel like Elias probably needs the victory, but Corbin, you know, he's been fed to so many people, and I know they want to keep him somewhat believable. He's pretty much the new Dolph Ziggler, and I'm a huge Dolph Ziggler fan, and I hate Trash Corbin with a passion as far as the character on television, but they're going to feed him to every new babyface that comes up to the main roster, so uh, I, I think that Trash Corbin probably needs to keep a little bit of his legitimacy, even though it, whatever the hell's left of that, but I'm going to go with Trash Corbin to win, even though it pains me to say that, even though I will be going hard for Elias to pick up this victory here at WrestleMania. Next up, guys, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Street Profits taking on Austin Theory and Angel Garza. Now, this one is completely random and thrown together, I feel like. I think that Austin Theory did have a match against the Street Profits on Raw or something like that. But I do not have figures of any of these guys. So, uh, you know what? I'm just going to go with the Street Profits to retain. I just don't see Austin Theory and Angel Garza winning. I feel like this match could be a sleeper on the card. I'm not a fan of Austin Theory. I think he's kind of overrated in my personal opinion. But you know what? He's, got, he's a young buck. He's got a lot of potential right here in this matchup to make a name for himself, but I am going to go with the Street Profits to retain, and hopefully we get those basic figures of those guys soon. Next is the Women's Tag Team Championship match between the Kabuki Warriors and Asuka and Kyrie Sane taking on Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Anyone that is a fan of the channel knows that I do not like Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross together on the same team. It just does not make sense to me creatively. I think they were thrown together for no reason other than no creative direction. And I think that Asuka and Kyrie Sane desperately need to retain the Tag Team Championships. Even though they don't really mean anything whatsoever, I think that they do need to retain just because I think that that is what is best. You know, they're, they're just, uh, I just don't like to, I don't want to see them lose the Tag Team Championships right here. Though the Tag Team titles don't mean much, they're a lot off better in the hands of Asuka and Kyrie Sane than anyone else in the division. So I'm going Asuka and Kyrie Sane to retain. Next up, guys, we have Otis taking on Dolph Ziggler with Mandy Rose in a singles match here. Now, this one is interesting. We got this little love triangle deal going on. Otis trying to fight for the love of Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose been messing around with Dolph Ziggler, you know, the Valentine's Day date or whatever the hell that was going on. And I think that Otis is going to win here. You know, I love Dolph Ziggler. I think it would be excellent to have Mandy and Dolph, like, kind of double cross Otis. Um, even if he beat Dolph, you know, do a double cross or something, have Mandy hit him in the nads or, or something like that and have an ultra heel force in Ziggler and Mandy Rose going forward on television. I think that would be much more creative. I think that would be a lot more entertaining going forward. But then again, you may like to see Mandy Rose and Otis going forward in a little babyface action that's entertaining. I don't know. You know, Vince loves his little comedic entertainment, so I can see that going. And you know what? I, I might could get behind that. 
but I do want my boy Dolph Ziggler to win here. His first ever singles match at WrestleMania, it will be in front of no one, and it will be versus Otis with the great talent that Dolph Ziggler has. Very upsetting, but you know what? I'm going to go with Otis to win here, and uh, even though I'm going to be going for my boy Dolph Ziggler in this one. Next up, guys, we have Aleister Black taking on Bobby Trashley in a singles match. Another matchup that I'm not looking forward to simply because I think this matchup is below Aleister Black. You know, I feel like Aleister Black could have tied up with anybody else, really, and, and brought us to a great matchup. There's plenty of talent out there that he could have burned the damn house down with on this show. But I guess they wanted to pair him with Trashley. It's completely random thrown together here, but maybe they can pull out a good match. I'll be highly surprised if they pull out a good match. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not really looking forward to it. I'm going to go with Aleister Black. I'll be crushed, I think, if Aleister Black loses. I think a lot of people would be really upset if Trashley were to defeat Aleister Black. But since it's, you know, Vince McMahon, who knows what the hell could happen, man? Who 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 freaking knows? I know that, you know, a lot of things have happened about this show already. It's pretty taped. I know a lot of spoilers are out there. I've tried my best to avoid those at this moment because I want to react to the show naturally when I review it. But hopefully Aleister Black can get the job done. I am going to go with Aleister Black to defeat Trashley here at WrestleMania. Yeah. Next up, guys, we have the Intercontinental Championship match between Sami Zayn with Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura in his corner, taking on Daniel Bryan with Drew Gulak in his corner. And this matchup right here could be match of the night. Do not sleep on this matchup. Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn going at it. I hope they throw everything and the kitchen sink at us in this matchup. Think about Sami Zayn and NXT, all the amazing matches that this man could have, what he did with Shinsuke Nakamura, what he has done in the past. I think that you put that together with Daniel Bryan, who you know can put on a great matchup any time, any place, anywhere with anyone. That That is the makings of a great WrestleMania match. Even though it's in front of no one, I would have loved to have seen it in front of a live capacity crowd. This is going to be a good matchup, I think. I think they're going to pull a great match out of each guy, and this one's going to be great, man. I can't wait for it. I am going to go... Oh my god, this is tough, man. This could just be a transitional champion deal. I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan. You know, it sucks. I, I think that they're going to treat Sami Zayn like a transitional champion right here. He just won the championship to go ahead and put it on Daniel Bryan here at WrestleMania, and I'm going to go with that. I'm going with Daniel Bryan to win the Intercontinental Championship, even though, you know, I, I would appreciate a Sami Zayn, uh, you know, retain it. I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan to win. I think this is one of the more difficult matches to call on the card, but I'm going Daniel Bryan. Next up, guys, we have two of my favorite wrestlers in the entire world going head-to-head -head in Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins with Buddy Murphy not too far behind, I'm sure, and he is a fantastic performer as well. Love Buddy Murphy to death. This one's going to be great. I'm really excited for this one. I'm excited to see how Seth Rollins comes out. You know, the attire he wears, Kevin Owens, uh, just two great talents, too, that I really, really enjoy, and I think that we have a great one right here. I'm going to go with Kevin Owens for the win, and I don't really know why. I just I, I just am going to go for my boy KO right here. Um, um, I could see them uh, having a great match, man. I hope it's, you know, it lives up to the hype. What I'm expecting out of these two, I hope they give us everything, man. With no crowd present, you know, this 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 whole event is kind of off the cusp a little bit. And I feel like, you know, th this is a perfect opportunity to just throw everything at everybody in each, each match. You know, don't make it your typical boring match. Just give us everything you got, man. Epic. No crowd present. Let's just get like put on a five-star. Everybody go out there and try to out outdo the next match over and over and over and over again. But anyways, I'm going to go with KO for the win over Rollins, even though uh, I can see it go either way. Next up, guys, is a triple threat ladder match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships between Miz and Morrison, the New Day, Big E, and Kofi Kingston taking on the Usos and Jay and Jimmy, and holy Christ, I wish this matchup was going to take place in front of a crowd. I know I'm going to say that about a million times in this video, but for this one, it is big, man. I mean, my God, can you imagine the pops and the surprises and everything like that? Um, if this was happening in front of a live crowd, I would say, you know, Xavier Woods comes out and helps New Day win the tag title. You know, he's been off of TV for so long with injury, um, but I think he's still off the shelf for a while, and so I'm going to go... Oh my god, this is a difficult one. I think I'm going to go with the Usos, man. I'm going with the Usos to win the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Again, I wish this one was going to be in front of a live crowd, but you know what, man? The circumstances we're given here, I, I, this one could be a banger as well. I'm interested to see how they play this one off. Given there's no crowd, you know, how awkward is that going to be? How weird is that to put on a big-time ladder match when you can't feel the crowd and feel everything going on? But I guess we're just going to have to see what takes place. But I am looking forward to this one a lot. I think all three teams have great potential here and they're going to tie up well we know what these guys can do we saw it a little bit in the chamber but i am going to go with the usos to win the smackdown tag team championships here at wrestlemania 36
Next up is the fatal five-way elimination match for the SmackDown Women's Championship between Bayley, Lacey Evans, Naomi, Sasha Banks, and Tamina. <laughs> Tamina, Jesus Christ. Well, Brad, I'm going to go with Bailey and Sasha Banks coming in to the finals. I think that Tamina gets eliminated first. I think that Lacey Evans gets eliminated second. Naomi gets eliminated third. We're down to Sasha and Bailey, and Sasha makes Bailey tap out. And Sasha Banks is your new SmackDown Women's Champion, and hopefully she gets a lengthy reign. I think every reign she's had, I think it's like four or five reigns now or something like that, all of them have ended in like 14 days or less or something like that. So hopefully this woman can hold on to the championship and they don't book her to just lose straight up but i am going to go with sasha banks to win the women's championship and that's what i'm going with man i got a lot of title changes on this show you know what uh, who, who cares the NXT Women's Championship is on the line between Rhea Ripley and Charlotte, and I gotta say, man, I am a huge fan of Rhea Ripley, and I do not want to see her lose here, but I, oh my god, man, I do not trust WWE with this at all. I feel like they're going to feed Rhea Ripley to Charlotte right here, and I'm super scared. I'm gonna say, I'm going with Rhea Ripley to retain. I think it would be huge for her, but I would not be shocked one damn bit if Charlotte wins, man, but I want Rhea Ripley to win. I think this one could be great. I don't I don't think we needed Charlotte to win the Royal Rumble to get here, um, but you know what? It is what it is, man. We're here now, and I hope that Rhea Ripley gets the job done. I think that both women are gonna be hard-hitting. I think we got some entertaining stuff coming forward for this women's match, and I am gonna go with Rhea Ripley to retain Jesus Christ, hopefully that's the case, but Rhea Ripley for, for the win. Next up, guys, we have the Raw Women's Championship match between Becky Lynch and Shayna Baszler, and I think everyone knows how this one's going to go. You know, I do not see Becky retaining as much as I love Becky, as much as I enjoy her work. Ah, uh, man, I do not see that happening here. I think Shayna's going to take the Raw Women's Championship from her, and yeah, it's another title change on this show, but you know what, man? I, I guess they're trying to make it exciting because of, you know, the, the, the circumstances. I feel like they're going to change a lot of titles around because they want, you know, the, there's no crowd there to react live to it, so you know what? They got to they give some surprises and stuff like that. This one is not a surprise, though. I think that everyone kind of sees this happening. A lot of people are advocating for it. For me, personally, I think Shayna Baszler is very boring. I think that her matches are boring and I don't look forward to this match because of that case but you know what maybe we'll get a good one I I don't I don't think so but you know what anything's possible but Shayna Baszler is going to win the championship and you know what we're just going to have to see what comes forward the only thing that would make that okay for me is if Ronda Rousey came out and attacked Shayna Baszler after she won the title but I guess we'll have to see about that I'm going with Shayna Baszler to win and beat Becky and become your Raw, Raw Women's Champion Next up is the GOAT John Cena taking on the Fiend Bray Wyatt in a Firefly Funhouse match. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but what about the House of Horrors match that we got with Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt? This is pre-taped, so I guess it's probably going to be somewhat similar to that. And God Almighty, the Fiend's probably going to defeat John Cena, and maybe they'll turn him heel. I don't know. But I want John Cena to win, even though that, you know, I, in my personal opinion, you guys know how I feel about it if you watch here on the channel. The, the Fiend has been ruined since Hell in a Cell, okay? When they did all that stuff about the chair shots and the sledgehammers and the weapons and the 25 curb stomps and all that stuff to the Fiend, I said the Fiend was dead. They killed him. I couldn't take him seriously anymore. You know, I can't buy into his matches because I know that 1AA, 2AA, 3AA, it's not going to put him away, and if it does, then it's completely illogical, and you've already stabbed yourself in the back, you've already, you know, written yourself, you booked yourself into a corner booking him like that, and it totally killed The Fiend for me, uh, an amazing talent, an amazing character that they had in The Fiend, and they completely ruined him in one night at Hell in a Cell, you guys know that I have mentioned that on the channel many, many times, going versus John Cena here, um, I don't give a damn if The Fiend loses, so I'm going John Cena all the way, I hope John Cena wins, I hope that he beats him, and other people are saying, oh, you killed the Fiend because John Cena's Super Cena. Here he comes. He just de defeats the Fiend, man. He, he, he destroyed another talent. Go join the Nexus. No, bro. Fiend's been dead for a long time. I don't care. John Cena for the W. Get the Fiend out of my face. No heel turn for Cena. No nothing. Get this man out of here. John Cena will defeat the Fiend in the Firefly Funhouse. Even though it'd be interesting to see the Fiend win, and I won't be shocked if that does take place, I am going to be going hard for Cena. 
Next up is the Boneyard match between The Undertaker and AJ Styles, and this is another matchup that you would have loved to seen like 10 years ago or 8 years ago, maybe even 15 years ago. They would have freaking burnt the damn house down. You would have wanted to, you, you give everything in your life to see this matchup take place. But in 2020, can they bring themselves to a good matchup? I don't know. I feel like The Undertaker's way past his prime, obviously. We've seen him in matches where it's just embarrassing to look at once we've known. You know, if you've watched him growing up like I have, and you've seen this man do all this work, and then you see him in the case he is now. Not saying he's in, like, you know, he just looks god-awful, but he has put on some matches where I'm just like, Jesus, man, bless his heart. But I love The Undertaker. I, I like AJ Styles a lot, and you know what? I hope we get a good matchup out of him. I think The Undertaker wins. I'm gonna go with The Undertaker to win over AJ Styles. Since both men are nearing the end of their careers anyway, I, you know, AJ Styles isn't a young buck anymore. I think he has plenty left in the tank, but it's not like he's a young talent that needs to get over. I think The Undertaker can take a victory here, and I think that's what's going to take place. I'm going with The Undertaker to defeat AJ Styles. He'll probably defeat the club, too. You know, OC come out there. He just destroys Gallows and Anderson as well, and The Undertaker will defeat AJ Styles. Next up is the last man standing match between Edge and Randy Orton, a match that I would give anything to see in front of the live crowd, guys, but this is a match that I think should main event night one on Saturday, to be honest with you. This or Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar, for sure. But Randy Orton versus Edge, man, we know the story. We know everything coming in. I think this match is going to be brutal. I think both men lay it on the line. I think we're going to get an epic clash, man. Just so much history, so much story, so much just epicness wrapped up in this matchup. I'm so excited. Two of my favorite wrestlers of all time going head to head here and I, I just can't wait for it man I'm gonna go with Edge to get the win simply because you know it's his return match it's a big deal you know we got all these eyes on it I'm gonna go with Edge to win but damn man I am excited for this one it would be a freaking understatement that is an understatement I am so hyped for this match and so ready to see these guys clash I again just wish it was in front of the live crowd but last man standing I mean who knows what the hell is gonna go down in this one I'm gonna go with Edge but I cannot wait for this one man Next up, guys, we have the Blue Universal Championship match between Goldberg and what was Roman Reigns. So Roman Reigns was in this matchup. He felt that, you know, with, due to his weak immune system, he did not want to go and fight in this matchup and wrestle at WrestleMania, get around everybody. He's going to stay at home in quarantine. So, you know, they haven't really revealed who is going to be the replacement. You know, there's been reports. There's been everything like that. At the time of recording this, I don't think they've made it official yet on who Goldberg is going to face. I think still they still have it billed as Goldberg versus is Roman Reigns, but according to my sources in different places on the internet, Brad, it says that the monster among men is going to be replacing him, Braun Strowman, and uh, if this is the case, I hope to God, I've, I've read a few places that apparently they, they you know, th this is going to be the thing that takes place. I hope to God that Goldberg wins here. I think that's why this matchup should not main event. You know, Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar should main event anyway, given that, you know, Drew McIntyre won the Royal Rumble. But Braun Strowman replacing Roman Reigns is just awful. You know, I, I cannot get behind Braun Strowman at all. I felt like they ruined this man a long time ago. And I feel like his ship has sailed so many times. I've said it a million times here on the channel. I'm going to continue to say it because I think that he should have won the Universal Championship three years ago. That did not take place in 2017. And now here we are in 2020. It should not happen here. I'm going to go with Goldberg to win. I think uh, there's no damn way that Goldberg is picking this man up in a jackhammer. So I think he'll hit him with a few spears. He's absolutely not hitting him with a jackhammer. There's no way this man couldn't lift the Undertaker. He couldn't lift the Fiend. There's no way he can lift Braun Strowman. Um, if that were to happen, I'd, I'd freaking blow my mind. I'd probably shit myself. But I'm going to go with Goldberg, man. Goldberg retains and we're going to have to wait until uh, you know we all this thing clears over, I guess, until he loses the championship. Unless Goldberg's ready to write himself off and then Braun Strowman wins, but I'm going to go with Goldberg, man. I'm going Goldberg. And mercifully, we have made it to the main event, ladies and gentlemen. The WWE Championship match between Brock Lesnar and Drew McIntyre. We've seen Drew McIntyre built up. You know, he's made his way through. He won the Royal Rumble. Everybody was losing their minds. And I'll finally say it in this video, man. This is the match that I think I most wanted to see in front of a live crowd. You know, everybody's been behind Drew McIntyre so much. And coming into this match, he has so much support. And I want to see him dethrone Brock Lesnar just like everyone else. And I think it is time, man. I think Drew McIntyre to main event the show, whether it be night one, night two, I don't give a damn. Drew McIntyre beats Brock Lesnar and wins that WWE Championship. And we finally give him a run. Honestly, I thought this, this moment would come as a heel. I thought he would win and then be the ultimate heel. But you know what? Somehow he, he managed to 
that flip to babyface and it's worked man I, I really don't know how the hell that worked but here we are so that is your main event that is what I'm going with Drew McIntyre defeats Brock Lesnar and I think I got every match you know they may add a match or two and my god 16 matches is a very long show that's why they split it up I guess into two different nights in front of no crowd I guess that would get really old really really quickly but I'm going to review night one and night two for you guys here on the channel I hope you guys did enjoy my predictions leave your predictions down below do you think Drew McIntyre is going to get it done do you think Goldberg retains the Blue Universal title what do you think is going on with that do you think Braun Strowman will be the replacement I guess we'll have to see about that but Drew McIntyre will finish off WrestleMania 36 as WWE champion and hopefully this thing blows over soon man because I am ready to get back to just live TV freaking sports freaking everything man this shit is ridiculous but anyways guys stay safe out there fart in bags and smell it and I'll see you guys in the next video follow me on Instagram and Twitter my name is Toys and I will see you guys in the next video thank you